out of Berlin with Humboldt University from uh, the great state of Louisiana, Michael Berta, one of the great textbooks used in Europe. Professor Berta, we greatly appreciate your effort to join us uh, this morning. How are the German people to respond to the cacophony that we see coming out of Cannes? What do you expect the German people to do, to say, and to vote on? Well, it's, uh, there's a lot of interesting voices coming out of uh, the rest of Europe, and I think the Germans, seeing that they're probably the most likely to be asked to pay for whatever comes out of it, are a bit nervous right now. And I think, you know, with a lot of, a lot of effort, Merkel and her party negotiated a deal um, to help uh, basically banks in Germany and France and help Greece as well. And then the Greeks uh, do a... 180 degree turn and then another 180 degree turn is just very nasty and I think uh, people are wondering you know what's what's going to happen next and I think it's just very it's very up in the air right now I read the newspaper headlines and it's uh, the mood right. is pretty strange the economy is doing well here right now so I, I guess people figure well if it's just Greece we could probably get away with paying for it but I think most people suspect deeply that this is not the beginning this is just the tip of the iceberg yeah, dreaded and, first uh, chart. That is, of course, a serious national problem. Let's bring up dreaded first chart here. This is one of the words from Berlusconi today. Italy has a hereditary, he said, hereditary uh, economics. I can't remember the exact usage. Well, we're going to call it a hereditary widening. Michael Bird, the markets are telling these elites what to do. With all of your study, and with you and Charles Y. Plotz, with your leading textbook used in European schools, when you look at all of this, is this original political economics? Is there something new this time? Or is this just European business as usual going back to the 19th century? <laughs> you could say that. The latter is certainly true in some, in some sense. I mean, everybody knows that Greece was part of a monetary union in the 19th century. And at the beginning of the 20th, they had to jump out. They were, they were booted out. Uh, there's a problem. We have a bunch of national governments that haven't ceded enough sovereignty yet. And to make a monetary union really work, you've got to be able to impose the will of the, of the community, of the zone, on the individual states. The United States, this has worked for 200 years. Uh, in Europe, it hasn't been really tried out yet. And we're just kind of learning the hard way that uh, someone's got to pay for this mess. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm starting to get the feeling, that I'm getting the feeling that it might be the central bank, and that's kind of what your previous commentator just said. And I think that's kind of where we're headed right now. Is the Bundesbank dead? Is the culture of the German central bank and the gnomes of Zurich, is that dead with this crisis? Well, I don't know about the gnomes of Zurich, but the, uh, the people in Frankfurt certainly have that view. And I think Germans are not particularly happy about that. And if inflation continues on its upward drift, there's going to be more and more political resistance to the, the ultimate bailout, which means the central bank just steps in and buys these, uh, these, this bad debt. Because when they do that, they take the pressure away from the national governments to do something. We saw that with Italy. Italy proposed a very drastic uh, budget uh, mm -hmm. refor reform, stringent ref uh, And they basically, as soon as the, the ECB started buying Italian debt, they just kind of uh, right. did a you know, sort of a step back. One final question, Michael, if we could. You took your PhD at Harvard, Mario Draghi down the river at MIT. How will Mario Draghi That's right. deal with this crisis? What is original about his tone, his economics, that makes him different from Trichet and makes him someone that can take charge? Well, he's certainly a, um, an MIT-trained economist. Uh, they're technically at the top of, of his uh, of his uh, area, and uh, he's retained a lot of that. It's just the analytic thinking that's important. And when you're in a situation like this, you can't be dogmatic. You can't sort of pay attention to old uh, rules of, of behavior. This is a new world. And I think really what, what Europe has to decide is whether or not the Eurozone is worth saving. And uh, I think Draghi is certainly the, mm. one of the best people uh, who could be be in charge of the, of the boat right now and not, not being dogmatic about it. Very good. Professor Berta, thank you so much. We greatly appreciate your effort to join us from our Berlin News Bureau.